Hi there, and welcome back to Pinch of Cooking. Today's episode is all about pumpkin. We will be roasting it, pureeing it, and then making several delicious sweet and savory recipes with it. I have here a nice Cinderella pumpkin, also known as a cheese pumpkin. It is my favorite pumpkin to cook with. I try to buy one every year, and it has a flavor and texture somewhere between butternut squash and a traditional orange pumpkin. We will start by cutting the pumpkin in half, and this does require some muscle. As you can see, it is not as hollow as the orange pumpkin and has lots more pumpkin meat to cook with here. After we get the two halves open, we're gonna continue cutting it into smaller wedges that can comfortably fit on a baking pan. Scoop out all the seeds and fibers and don't throw them away. I will teach you in the next part how to make an awesome crispy snack from them. Continue processing the rest of the pumpkin and line the wedges up on a baking pan. You may need more than one pan depending on the size of your pumpkin. Miraculously, the whole pumpkin actually fit on one baking sheet for me. Now brush each piece with olive oil to lock in the moisture and prevent drying out in the oven. And we put it in the oven and bake at 400 degrees Fahrenheit, 200 degrees Celsius, until pumpkin can be easily pierced with a knife or a fork, similar to a potato. And depending on the size of your pumpkin, it could take anywhere from 45 minutes to over an hour. Once the pumpkin is cool enough to touch, we're gonna peel all the pieces and cut them into cubes. I'm also cleaning all the pieces from any burnt bits or leftover pulp. As you're cubing it, you need to start thinking about what recipes you would like to make and whether you need the pumpkin cubed or pureed and whether you're gonna cook now or you'll need to freeze it for later. Most of my recipes require pureed pumpkin, but I need about three cups for my risotto, which I'm going to set aside. The rest of the pumpkin I'm going to puree in the blender. And once I have it all blended, this is a point where you can divide it into one cup measurements and freeze it for later use. Pureed pumpkin freezes and defrosts really well. This pumpkin is fully processed and ready for cooking, and the rest of the chapters in this video will be my favorite pumpkin recipes, starting with the roasted pumpkin seeds. These roasted pumpkin seeds are super crispy and flavorful, and you can eat them with the shells on. We start this recipe by cleaning the each seed from the pulp. It is a tedious process, but you don't want any pulp left because it will burn in the oven. The pumpkin seeds are all cleaned up, and now I can throw away the orange pulp, which I'm actually going to compost. Next to a pot of boiling water, I'm gonna add about a teaspoon of salt and a teaspoon of baking soda. Add your seeds to the boiling water, and once it comes back to a boiling point, you would cook it for 10 minutes. Parboiling pumpkin seeds help the seeds to bake evenly, and soda breaks down the surface of the seeds and helps them to become super crispy in the oven. Strain the seeds once they're done boiling and pat them dry with a paper towel. Next are the seasonings. We start with about two tablespoons of olive oil, sea salt, and I really like the taste of nutritional yeast on these seeds because it has the same flavor profile as Parmesan cheese. And I encourage you to experiment with the flavors here. Maybe try dry garlic, cayenne pepper, paprika, or even curry powder. Give the seeds a good mix and spread the pumpkin seeds in a single layer on a baking sheet. I have the sheet covered with parchment paper just for easier cleanup. Bake the seeds at 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 175 degrees Celsius for about 30 minutes. Make sure to give it a good mix halfway through the baking and the seeds are ready when they're golden brown and crispy. Taste to see if they need any more seasonings and enjoy! Nothing says fall season like a bowl of warm, creamy pumpkin soup. Since pumpkin itself has sweet and earthy flavors, a good pumpkin soup is always a combination of sweet and savory flavors. 
We start by preheating a pot with cooking oil and adding to it a large chopped onion. Saute the onion and when the onion becomes translucent and you start seeing the golden edges, we're gonna add three to four cloves of chopped garlic and cook for about two more minutes until the garlic becomes fragrant. Next are the spices, one teaspoon of ground coriander, one teaspoon of cumin, one teaspoon of ground ginger, and then we mix it all up together and we cook the spices for about two minutes on medium flame. Add a large pinch of salt, mix it all up together, and now we are going to add one can of regular coconut milk. If you don't like the taste of coconut milk, you could use either regular milk or other plant-based milks. Stir the milk in to dissolve all the lumps. And now we will add three cups of pumpkin puree. This is the pumpkin puree that I prepared earlier from a big Cinderella pumpkin, but of course this recipe can be made from canned pumpkin. Keep stirring the soup on low simmer, um, and the soup should cook simmering about 10 minutes to bring all the flavors together. Once the soup finished cooking, we're gonna puree the soup with either a handheld blender or pour the mixture into upright blender. Actually, in an upright blender, it tastes even smoother. Now taste the soup to see if it's well balanced in terms of spices and add more salt if needed. Right before serving the soup, I like to toast shell pumpkin seeds as garnish. I put them on a lightly buttered pan with a tiny pinch of salt and they are done when they start turning a toasted brown color. Now garnish the soup with either coconut milk or cream and add your toasted seeds on top. Enjoy! Sweet pumpkin risotto is the very definition of a heartwarming comfort food. It is best described as a cross between rice risotto and a rice pudding, and it makes a really satisfying breakfast on a cold fall or winter morning. Making the risotto is really easy. I start with about two and a half to three cups of cubed roasted pumpkin and mash it with a potato masher. And what we're looking for is the consistency of a lumpy mashed potatoes. To our mashed pumpkin, we add one cup of white rice. And then we follow that up with about one and a half cup of milk. And you can use regular or plant-based milk for this. We will be adding more milk as the rice cooks and absorbs the moisture. Right away, put the pot on a very low flame and start cooking it. To the pumpkin, I'm adding one tablespoon of white sugar. You may need more later, but wait till it starts cooking and you can taste all the flavors together. Also very important to add sufficient amount of salt so the risotto does not taste flat. I like to add a teaspoon of pumpkin spice, but if you don't have pumpkin spice, you can do a combination of cinnamon and nutmeg. Now bring the mixture to a boil Keep stirring it as it cooks. And for the next 20 to 30 minutes, you will have to stay by the pot, stirring it frequently to make sure the pumpkin doesn't burn to the bottom and slowly adding the milk bit by bit every time as you see the rice absorbing the milk and expanding. Your risotto will be fully done when the rice is fully cooked. At the very end, add one tablespoon of cold butter into the risotto Mix it in, and that's the final touch that will bring the whole dish together. Enjoy this dish piping hot with dry fruit, seeds, and maple syrup as garnish. Now let's make my all-time favorite pumpkin dessert, the classic pumpkin pie. It's super easy to make and always tastes like holidays. Making the pie is super easy. Start with two cups of roasted pumpkin puree, To the pumpkin puree, we add a full can, 14 ounces, of sweetened condensed milk. Two whole large eggs. 
three teaspoons of pumpkin spice and if you don't have spice use one teaspoon of cinnamon half a teaspoon of ginger half a teaspoon of nutmeg and half a teaspoon of cloves don't worry about memorizing the recipe i'm going to put everything down below in the description box and as always don't forget about a pinch of salt all desserts need a small pinch of salt now give it a really good mix with your whisk to make sure that everything is perfectly blended and now we're ready for our pie shell you can use either store-bought dough or homemade pie crust just make sure it's chilled before we put the filling in pour all the filling in carefully and now transfer it to the oven where it's going to bake at 375 degrees Fahrenheit for 45 to 50 minutes. The way to test it if it's done is by inserting the knife in the middle and if it comes out clean, it's ready. Mine is ready and I'm gonna let it sit until it comes to room temperature and then put it away in the fridge. Serve it chilled with a little bit of whipped cream and cinnamon or pumpkin spice sprinkled on top. Enjoy! Making a homemade pumpkin spice latte is easy and tastes so much better than the syrupy coffee shop versions. We start with a tablespoon of pureed pumpkin, make sure there's no lumps in it. Add to it one to two teaspoons of maple syrup, about half a cup of milk, and mix it all together really well. Now we're gonna cook it until it's simmering. Add about half a teaspoon of pumpkin spice or cinnamon. Mix it in all really well. And now we're ready to assemble our latte. Start with your favorite coffee or espresso. Add the pumpkin milk in. Top it off with some whipped cream and sprinkle some cinnamon or pumpkin spice on top. And now it's ready to be enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe for more awesome content.